Hi everyone, my name is Kelly Nottingham. I am a belly dancer in Houston, Texas, and this video is to help you put together and stabilize your Shamadon. My troupe recently ordered Shamadons from Egypt off of a seller on eBay, and the seller was very helpful, uh, but when the Shamadon came, it was in many pieces that had to be assembled, and there were no instructions, no tools, and uh, a couple of the ladies in my troop actually were missing pieces of their small little nuts. So once we got them together, we also realized there were some stabilization issues with them. So I would turn my head and the little arms would keep turning after I had stopped turning my head, which is not a good feeling when you're trying to balance something on your head. So I'm putting together this video to help you uh, Put together your shamadan, understand the order that you need to put it together in, the tools that you'll need, and some tips that you can use to help stabilize the pieces of the shamadan in place so they won't move on you, and uh, a great tip for the candles themselves to help them stay in place so you don't have to worry about them falling out either. So first I wanted to show you what my shamadan looks like. It is a nine candle shamadan with four arms and a top cup on it. This shamadan again came in multiple pieces with the crown and then all of these center pieces here in the middle. Uh, those pieces were all separate. Uh, all of the arms came separately. So uh, it took a little trial and error to figure out how to put this thing together. And so this is what this Shamadan put together looks like. Yours may be a little bit different depending on the style you get, but hopefully uh, you'll be able to get some tips from this video as we go through how to put this one together. So from the top looking down, I wanted to show you how deep this little nut right here in the top is. It's very, very shallow. I'm going to turn this toward the light so you can see a little bit better here. It's uh, mainly really only about maybe a quarter of an inch sticking out the top of that nut. So this is going to be important as you put together your shamadan to make sure that your your central bolt is not too long. Otherwise you're going to have a hard time keeping that top candle in place if the bolt is sticking up too far. So I've taken my shamadan almost completely apart. I wanted to show you the different parts that you should have. And I'll go through some of the tools that you can use and some extra things that you might want to consider that will make the shamadan more stable as you wear it. So your shamadan, uh, if you bought the same kind I do or if you bought one similar, should have these basic pieces. You will have the crown piece and you'll have this long bolt that goes uh, into the crown piece. Now this bolt usually will come separately. It'll come uh, not attached already to the crown. Honestly, I didn't want to take mine out because I have it adjusted to exactly the right height and I didn't want to have to take it out and reset it. Uh, you will have, for this particular shamanon, we have two longer arms with the cups and saucers already attached to them. We have two smaller sized arms with the cups attached. We have three center pieces that will go in between these arms. So one that is a half piece and two uh, that are a bit longer. We have another saucer and cup, and that's going to be for the very top of the shamadan. Now, one item that was missing from several of the shamadans that ladies in my troop received were these little nuts. So this nut um, was... This one for my shamadan is actually a five millimeter nut. Uh, make sure that you check that you have at least two of these when you get your shamadan. You're going to need a minimum of two to put your shamadan together and make it stable. A lot of the ladies in my troop only ended up getting one of these and it caused some major instability issues that we had to then go back and fix. So if you don't have two of these, before you put anything else together, my recommendation is to take this bolt right here with you to a home improvement store and have them, uh, if, if you aren't familiar with how to fit 
nuts onto threaded bolts like this, you can have them help you with it. But basically you'll go into the, the nuts and bolts section and you'll find uh, these nuts that will actually fit onto the diameter of this nice and snug. You can usually get them in a pack of maybe five and uh, you'll need, like I said, at least two of them. So as far as tools, and I'm going to try to move over here without making y'all motion sick. Uh, this Shamadon, when it arrived, it actually came with this cute little screwdriver. Uh, this is a, it's actually a Phillips head screwdriver. So it's got the four uh, little, almost like a cross shape when you look at it from the top. Um, it actually will pull out, this piece pulls out, and there's a flathead screwdriver as well. Uh, the cups in this Shamadon are attached with a Phillips head. So this is to tighten the cups uh, down onto the arms right there, so to make those more secure. However, it did not come with any other tools. So uh, we have, this is a, a socket wrench, and this fits over that exact size of nut. Now, if you don't have a socket wrench, you can get a pair of uh, needle nose pliers that will work. They're very thin tipped pliers that you can use, uh, that you'll actually be using to put that top nut uh, that's going to hold the whole thing together. That top nut you can use uh, needle nose pliers. Socket wrench is actually much easier if you have one or if you can borrow one from someone in the right size. Uh, the other thing is this pair of really nasty looking <clears throat> pliers that belong to my significant other. Um, he uses these a lot, uh, obviously, but um, these pliers are adjustable, and you'll you'll be able to use these as well to tighten those those nuts on uh, onto the bolt when you're first putting it on to make sure that it's nice and tight. So you will need uh, not only pliers of some kind or an adjustable wrench that you can use uh, to adjust the nut onto the the main bolt to begin with, but also something narrow enough. Uh, on the on the tip, like these are not narrow enough to be able to get into one of these little cups to tighten that that nut down into that top cup. All right, so a couple of other uh, items that you might find useful uh, for your shamadan putting together. I have bought some craft foam that I use as little washers to go in between the different pieces of the shamadan. So if any of you have ever put together a shamadan before, you may notice that the arms, where these arms connect right here, these metal pieces thread over the bolt, and they basically crisscross each other. This one will sit in underneath this other one. And if they're not really tightly, precisely milled, so they're very, very flat, you'll have a gap. And that gap will cause some wiggle room when you're putting your shamadan together. What that means is that, like I mentioned when we first started the video, when I first put my shamadan together, put it on my head, and turned around, the arms would keep moving after my head stopped. Uh, they weren't sticky enough and tight enough onto each other uh, for it not to move. So to remedy that, I decided to make some type of little squishy washer, almost like, well, for those of us who are familiar with uh, dance anatomy, we know that the bones of the spine, the vertebrae, are uh, have discs in between them that are a little bit squishy, and that's what keeps the bones from rubbing against each other. So this is the same basic concept. You can use felt if you like as well. Uh, I had this craft foam left over from another project I was working on. Uh, I used this gray, obviously, because my shamadan is silver. Uh, if your shamadan is a gold or brass color, you'll want to use a, a yellow color. Uh, this stuff is very inexpensive, and you can get it in the craft section of uh, any of your craft type shops or uh, large department store kind of shops. Um, this, it's thin, and it uh, I cut little washers. I use nine on my shamadan, and you can see these are about the size of an American nickel, Canadian nickel, uh, maybe a euro coin. So essentially I just cut out little squares of this. I folded it uh, in half, took a little chunk out of the middle with a pair of scissors, 
trimmed off the edges just a little bit to make it slightly round and cut a slit in it to be able to slide it over that bolt. So this is nothing that has to be gorgeous. Uh, most of this is going to be completely hidden once you get the chamadon together so it doesn't have to be really precise. But I find that putting this in, especially with something like this foam or a, a felt, will actually add enough extra texture to keep those pieces from moving on each other. So one other item that I wanted to mention before we get started putting our chambadon actually together is an idea to keep your candles in the cups very securely. So one of the husbands of one of my troop mates came up with a brilliant idea to do this. We use electric candles in our chambadons and we got some poster putty. Uh, he said that he th the recommendations we had heard before were to use aluminum foil to try to smush into the cup to try to hold the candles in place. This poster putty works like a charm to keep those candles in place so that they're not uh, going to be moving around on you while you're dancing. All right, so let's get started with putting our chambadon actually together. Uh, as I mentioned, you're going to thread this bolt into the nut there's a nut that is actually welded into the to the top of your crown piece here that this just screws right into um, this is the one piece that takes a little bit of trial and error because you're not going to be exactly sure how long this thing needs to come out of the top of that crown until you put the whole thing together so give yourself a little time maybe you got a glass of wine to do this so that you can be patient with this process so you're going to thread this into your uh, into your crown and we'll put the whole thing together to test that length of this bolt once you're satisfied with that length so that that top of that little cup on the very top of of your shamadan uh the bolt coming out of it is maybe only at most a quarter of an inch, so just enough for that last nut to grab onto. Once you're satisfied with this length, and I'm going to show you what how the pieces go in order in just a second, so you can put that in order on here, test that length. We'll pretend that we've done that now. So I'm taking that off, uh, all of this extra stuff off for now. And this is where we have nut number one that is added on. This is the nut that a lot of the ladies in my troop did not realize they needed to have. And because they did not have this nut on here, essentially tightening this bolt in place, this whole bolt was moving uh, like a palm tree in the wind. It was, it was really uh, challenging for them to try to balance the shamadon with this thing being so loose. So tighten this nut down, use your pliers, get this nut nice and tight when you're, when you're sure about the length of your bolt, how long it needs to be once you put it all on there and take it back off. And this should be secure enough that you can pick this up by the bolt and this thing is very solid. It is not moving uh, once we have that in place. So that is our our first key piece. Now, when I first put mine together the first time, I made the mistake of putting that bolt in, putting every uh, piece of the shamadon together, and then trying to tighten it up on the top. Um, that didn't work all that well because the bolt was too long. Then I thought, oh, I'll be brilliant, and I'll put all of this stuff on the bolt before I put it in the crown bad idea. You cannot get this this whole thing with all of the decorations on it into the into the crown after you've already put this stuff on there. So put this bolt in first and get it set in place. So the next thing we're going to put on here is this little guy right here. It's this half piece. This threads over top of the hole and I'm going to back up a little bit. Forgive me. This is uh, challenging to do with one hand. So this piece goes on top you may have to finagle these pieces a little bit to get the bolt to come through the top, but this slides down all the way to the bottom. Now, I'm going to take washer number one. I'm going to put washer number one right here. And again, this does not have to be perfectly precise. This is just to provide a little bit of cushion. Okay, so there is number one. Next up for our shamadon 
is one of our long arms. I'm going to slide this on again, making sure that it's nice, the cushion little washer piece is right in between. Now, as you're putting your shaman on together, also, uh, you want to make sure that your troop, if you're performing with a troop for this, that you have the arms lined up uh, in the same direction. So either, this is the front of the shamadan, so you would either have your first cup over the front of your face or have it set at a diagonal so that everybody matches. All right, so we've got that one on. Next washer number two. And long arm number two. Now, as you put this one on, you will hopefully already feel how much more stable that is with those little washers in there. All right, so I'm setting mine at a diagonal here, and I'm going to put on another little washer. Next, we have one of these spacers. So we'll put this guy on on the top here. Nice and secure. Put another washer on. And now it's time for our smaller arms to go on. So with the smaller arms, one important thing to keep in mind is that you don't want the smaller arm cups to be directly over top of these cups on the bottom, otherwise your candles are not gonna fit on. So I'm gonna have mine right here. So this one is basically pointed straight over the front of the shamadon. We have washer, and this one I didn't cut a very big hole in, so I'm just gonna smoosh it. It's gonna get smooshed anyway, so that's fine. Then the next arm goes on the top and another washer. Then our second of these long spacer pieces. Now as you start to get close to the end here where you're getting to where you're about to put this top cup on, you're going to think to yourself, wow, I don't have a whole lot of room on that nut. Uh, however, you are going to be tightening all of this down, so it's going to take up a lot of the slack uh, in that bolt as you, as you tighten that down. So you're going to put that top saucer and cup onto this top section. Uh, I need both hands to do this, so I'm going to have to set the camera down to do this. But you're basically going to take the little saucer, you're going to put that on top, and I'm having to balance this right now. That bolt is uh, is going to be long enough, I promise you. And then you have your little cup that's going to go on top of that. And I'm going to tighten that on with this little nut. So let me do that really quickly, and I will be right back. All right, so I've basically finger-tightened this nut in the top just enough so that the whole thing is holding together. This is now the time where I'm going to go and make sure that my cups are aligned like I want them to be. You'll still have a little bit of room uh, space to adjust once you get this a little bit tighter, but it's a good idea now to make sure that everything is aligned. You can see from the top uh, that I basically got everything set fairly close to where I want it, so my candles are not going to be hitting each other. Uh, I'm going to use my socket wrench here uh, to tighten. Again, if you don't have a socket wrench, you can use needle nose pliers to do this. And one important, very important thing I wanted to mention about this is as you are tightening this, you will be pushing pressure onto this nut to tighten it. Please, please, please make sure that when you do so, you put your left hand down here underneath that bolt to hold that bolt from here. If you don't, you will risk actually crushing your entire crown in from the pressure. Don't ask me how I know this. It was, um, it was a little bit traumatic for about five seconds there until we fixed it. Uh, but make sure that you're putting pressure underneath that bolt uh, with one hand, or if you have to borrow somebody else's hand to help you while you're tightening this nut on the top. 
All right, so I've tightened my top nut now. Uh, it's nice and secure in there with that uh, socket wrench. Or again, if you have to use needle nose pliers, just make sure you have a good grip on that nut so you don't round the edges of it. It makes it much harder to, to get tight if it's got rounded edges on it. So now the shamadan should be nice and tight. Once you, once you get it tightened, you should be able to pick it up and move it around and the arms don't really move. Everything feels very secure. Uh, if things are still shifting, if the arms are still shifting after you tighten, you need to tighten a little bit more. Now, we talked about at the very beginning making sure that your bolt was going to be long enough to run up through the middle here. This is where you get good practice putting this thing together and taking it apart. If your bolt, once you get to the very top here, is too long once you tighten it in, you either need to figure out how to get steady enough hands and a Dremel or some other little cutting tool to cut that off at the top so you don't have a ton of bolts sticking out, or you get the joy of taking the whole thing apart again, tightening the bolt down further into the bottom, and then putting that, that bottom nut in again, and then putting everything else on top and then tightening it up. Trust me, I had to do this about three or four different times to get this to where I wanted it. So once you get your shamadan to where it feels very stable, the arms are staying where they need to stay, you may have uh, a couple of cups that feel loose. This one feels fairly secure. Uh, one of mine was actually feeling a little bit loose earlier. Ah, here it is. Okay, so this is where this little screwdriver comes in handy. So all you do, uh, you just put your screwdriver in that little screw right there. You tighten it up. Didn't take much. That cup is nice and secure now. Uh, you may also have some cups that look a little bit wonky. So for example, this little guy right back here uh, is, is bent. He looks crooked compared to the rest of them. So this metal is actually pliable enough to be able to just sort of smush. Um, also, as you tighten these cups down with your screw, uh, you'll be able to flatten the bottom of that cup and that saucer, it'll smush them down together more securely so that your cups will stay in place. Now, that being said, if you need to, uh, you, you get a cup that's bent, you have a little bit of a, a bend or a, a crease or something, a little lump or something in your crown that you want to straighten out, uh, you can do that with your pliers. Now, um, over here, I've got, actually, I only used uh, seven washers on this one today because uh, I didn't need any extra cushion in between. You can always double up those washers if you need to. And you'll see when you glance at it, uh, you really can't see the washers really at all, especially um, once you get the thing on. Uh, my theory is if people can see it, they're looking way too close at you anyway. So. I have this extra piece of foam, and you can see it's got a bunch of little holes and smushes in it. This is the, the piece that I use when I'm trying to unbend or unkink a piece of the metal anywhere on here if it gets a little bit smushed up. Uh, you don't want to use the pliers directly on the metal because that's actually going to scratch up the metal really badly. So you can cut a little piece of this foam and put it around it and then clamp with your pliers over top of that foam to do any bending or unbending on this that you need to do. That just protects the finish of your shamadan there. Uh, so the last little tip that I wanted to give to you uh, for your shamadans to make sure that you feel really stable and secure. Uh, once you get all of this adjusted and it feels like the arms aren't going to move like they're, they're loose, the cups are nice and tight. See, this cup is actually a little loose too. Um, once you get the cups nice and tight, you get them straightened out where you want them. Um, you adjust your shamadan here on the back this little butterfly bolt is actually, uh, it's just, this little nut here is just decorative. There's actually a nut underneath there. And you can adjust your shamadan here uh, with these holes to make it uh, looser or tighter. 
I recommend tighter. You don't want it to go anywhere, land in somebody's lap while you're dancing. So uh, it's a good idea to keep this thing nice and snug. If you need to add additional padding on the inside of this, a couple of our ladies in the troop did have to do that. They used um, foam. Uh, you can use uh, like a, a foam that you would use for upholstery, for example, on the inside of this, and then just cover it with either a red velvet, red velveteen, uh, or even a red fleece of some kind, you can stitch that in and make sure that you are you're keeping the look, uh, but that this shamadan is very secure on your head. So once you get all of this done, it's all secure and great. However, you still have to put candles in these cups. This is where this putty comes in so handy. Uh, again, uh, one of the husbands of one of our dancers in the troupe recommended this, and this was just an absolutely brilliant idea. So you can buy this putty. It comes a bunch of different brands create it. Uh, you can get it at grocery stores in the uh, school section. You can get it in all kinds of, of home supply stores. Even office supply stores will have this. So what I did with this is I took I took this putty and I ripped it. It's like very heavy taffy, basically. So it comes in four strips. I was able to get enough putty to secure my candles out of two of these strips. So I was able to use, uh, we were able to share or you could use it for two different performances if you want to because you have enough here. I ripped this into about quarter sized pieces, each one of these uh, strips of it. And I basically made a little snake out of it, a uh, couple of inches long, just kind of rolled it and smushed it together. And the stuff, if you've never used it before, it's like extremely thick but sticky Play-Doh. So you can roll this into little strips. I then took my candle here and I wrapped this around my candle about half an inch from the bottom, like so, secured that on nicely. So it was going to be nice and, uh, and secure all the way around it. And then you can stick it into your cup. And then you just smush it down into the cup. Now the nice thing about this stuff is uh, you cannot see it on stage, which is great. And this makes these candles stay in so incredibly securely. Uh, that little guy is, is not going to come out. Uh, until you really pull him to come out. Now the nice thing about this too is when you do need to pull the candle out, for example, to turn it on on the bottom, you can turn it on, shove it back in, smush that back down, and you're ready to go. Uh, at the end of the evening, I like to take this off after my performance. I'll pull this stuff off, uh, smush it back into its little flat shape, and I keep it in a Ziploc bag or a, a plastic sealed bag. And you'll be able to use it for multiple performances uh, if you keep it secured and sealed up away from air because this stuff will dry out and get brittle after a while. Uh, but these little packets of putty are maybe two, three dollars. They're very inexpensive and they really, really do a great job of keeping your candles very securely in place. So that is my uh, tutorial uh, and best advice that I have for putting together your shamadan and keeping it nice and secure. I hope you have a wonderful performance with your shamadan and let me know in the comments if this was helpful. Thanks!